Well, I guess you just can't keep a good guy down. Because <laughs> Chucky is back once Yay! again for season two. It's finally here. It's finally <laughs> here. Now, the reason we didn't get to this yesterday is because the sci-fi app never put the damn episode on and it wasn't available to purchase or anything. We couldn't find it anywhere. It was only on live TV. Yeah. If you had like Hulu Live or whatever the hell. Or if you had, you know, cable with sci-fi. But nope, couldn't find it otherwise. Could not. Then we found out it was on YouTube that the sci-fi channel actually put it on their YouTube channel yep. at like 8 o'clock. Yep, but we did but not we never, check it. Yeah, we didn't check it. We didn't Which... check it until like right before we were going to bed and was like... Oh, you guys. you got to be kidding me. But anyways. I'm pretty well, sure that they did that for the first season, too. Like, the first episode was available on YouTube, but yeah. we forgot, so. It is what it is. Let's talk about the episode. Yeah. All right. Chucky, episode one of season two, called Halloween 2. <laughs> and we even have a character in this named Dr. Mixter. We sure do. From Halloween 2. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Um, so this one picks up right where the last one leaves off mm -hmm. with Andy <clears throat> and he's on the, um, delivery truck with Tiffany at gunpoint yep. and you got a bunch of Chuckies in the back. Now this scene is pretty CG, mm -hmm. um, on the dolls when they're just like, when they're having their conversation with each other and I still think it looks pretty good overall, but I just definitely noticed it a bit here. Um, I feel like I feel like they use CGI enhancements, especially like on the mouths, mm. almost every time. Yeah. But here I was really noticing it more than usual. Mm, me too. Um, but not bad. I, I never was like, oh, geez, I really wish they didn't do that. It's just I think it was like really really difficult i think that's just it right you like it takes how many people to puppet oh my god one puppet so many people right yeah so if you have three of them all standing next to one another and trying to shoot a scene like that with puppeteers i'm sure it's an absolute nightmare yes and I honestly it looked totally fine so i'm fine with it i yeah, just would too. be not so fine with it if it's always what they did mm, right mm -hmm. i'd still watch the show i'd still love the show i'm sure mm -hmm. but i would be like eh, i really wish they'd go back to some puppeteering yes because that's one of the things that you know we love about the like the chucky doll is the puppeteering on it it's yeah. so cool to see but i think that yeah the cgi is very minor and as you said like the the practicalities of filming a scene with three puppets has got to be difficult so it's definitely something that you can overlook, but we just notice it because we're uh, nitpicky or nah. detail-oriented. Sure. We also have a new addition to the Chucky reviews. Mm -hmm. We did not have an authentic good guy doll last time. But now we do. His box is right there. I'm sure you've seen it on the channel a bunch. He's been <laughs> featured on the channel, on the TikTok and everything. Plenty. I wish he was a... A talking, blinking. Oh my god! Head moving. Yes. You know. Five thousand uh, dollar version. <laughs> what voodoo is? doll, murderer. No, none of those things. <laughs> just the talking, just, blinking. Yeah. Just the hi. I'm Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Man, that, that's the thing I'd want him to say the most. But yeah, yeah. what do you guys think? It cost uh, Kaylee an arm and a leg. Yeah, but I got replacement arms and legs, yep, so I'm all sure right. Does. Uh, yeah. So, um, a little interesting thing that's going on here is that the Chuckies, uh, <coughs> me. don't remember who Tiffany or Andy are. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm assuming that this is, I mean, I don't know if this was touched upon much in the first season, of them, like, not remembering. I mean, it's been a year now it since has. we watched it. I don't remember them not remembering. <laughs> Ironic. Ironically. But yeah. um, I like the idea that they've totally, like, that they're starting out kind of as a blank slate. 
Although they do remember eventually. Sure. So it's interesting. It's like those memories are like deep within. I almost feel like it's dilution Mm. is what I was getting from it. Like Chucky is being split into so many horcruxes Mm -hmm. at this point that is, you know, his soul is becoming shattered and his, and his memories, like his copies Mm. are defective. Yeah. Right. Like he's just copying self too much to the point where, you know, they're they're starting to have issues Mm -hmm. being able to be perfect replicas, but like you give them some time and they can start to piece things together. Sure. Yeah. Right. So, mm. I, I please remind us if if this is touched upon in the first season. I I don't remember it, but yet again that would be ironic. But I don't remember that being touched upon much. Yeah, I don't think it was. I don't I feel think like we got that much time. Yeah. And they're immediately Charles Lee Ray, and they're immediately like up to date with when he transferred the soul over. Mm. You know. I just don't remember us getting a ton of, like, dialogue between the other Chucky dolls. Like, I know there was some, but I don't feel like it was enough. Like, they have his personality, clearly. Like, that's still there. But I don't think there was enough communication between them to figure out if they had, like, spots in their memory. But, I mean, remind us, because it has been a year, so. So, yeah. Anyway, so Andy drives off a cliff and kills... Potentially kills all 72 dolls, right? It was in a 72. Mm -hmm. Um, Andy did not go over the side. I mean, you think that (laughs) the second it happens, you're like, he jumped out and it's going to be a reveal. And they're like, they never found the body. So 100% Andy's alive. Uh, Kyle, still up in the air Mm -hmm. on that one. Um, I don't think she's dead. Like, they'll keep it for some big moment reveal. But uh, for now, Andy's 100% not dead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, How many Chuckies survived that accident? I mean, the suicide bomber in this episode Mm -hmm. is like, we we have enough survivors to take the risk of this. Right? And they want them dead. Like, I guess because they pose a threat and, and they're pissed off, even though it was Andy mm-hmm. is the one who killed all, all you know, whatever ones they killed. You know, they're not they're not interested in Jake and Devin and Lexi and even freaking Caroline at this point. They want them all dead. Yeah. Anyone who has anyone who believes in him, they want dead. Yeah. Which is interesting yes. because obviously um, they very much wanted them alive and on their side Mm -hmm. and um i don't know what this does for carolyn because we had always uh hypothesized that caroline or carolyn is uh going to join forces with chucky and we even thought in this episode it Mm -hmm. was hinting towards caroline killing her mom Yes, we started to think that she was going to kill her mother, which is how they would end up at the Catholic uh, boarding school. Yeah. But that doesn't happen this episode. Um, I still think she is highly sus, though, and I do not trust her. I think that there is something going on in that little brain of hers, and I think she's going to be influenced by Chucky in some way. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. I... I... I definitely felt that all the way up until this episode. And mm. even then, like, because, right, she, Lexi comes in her room. She ties up her, um, the wedding bell doll. Wedding bell doll, mm-hmm. which, of course, is a original Tiffany doll, right? It's the so doll cool. that Tiffany has that she then puts her soul into. Yeah. And then makes up into what we know as, as the bride of Chucky Tiffany doll. And we get a... A specific yeah. Bride of Chucky reference mm-hmm. here. Which is awesome. Which was so cool, cool to hear. Um, but I'm not, yeah. I, I When she, Lexi comes in, ties it all up, and then she leaves. And then when she comes back, Caroline has cut the doll free and has taken it to bed with her. Yes. And at first you're like, oh no, did like Chucky cut that doll free and put her in bed or whatever. But no, she definitely did. Uh-huh. And she's like terrified of this doll. But I, I can, I can still see it being 
that Caroline will, will fall to the dark side here. I mean, but... I just thought for sure like it was going to happen in this episode. But after mm-hmm. Chucky tried to come and kill her again, <laughs> it's yeah, like... again. I mean, she's a child, yes. so... But I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm a little less inclined to believe she's going to be a killer now. Really? Mm-hmm. But I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fully out. I'm not fully out. Yeah. I don't know. I have I have my doubts about her. Yeah. For sure. But we'll see. We'll see what comes. So, we get the pumpkin opening. So right? good. So, in obviously every episode, we get a different uh, title card made of different collections of specific items. This one being um, Chucky Faced Pumpkins, which Jake himself carves one. He's he's an amazing pumpkin carver. Yeah, oh my gosh. And the sculpting uh, ability. He might need to seek uh, like mental health uh, <laughs> because whew, man. I mean, I get it. These guys these guys are tra- traumatized. Yeah. Right? For sure. But uh yeah, he he's got some pumpkin carving skills. I'll give him that. He's artistic. Yeah. So Really artistic. Yeah, it's really, really artistic. Um, but <clears throat> I always like to mention the different uh, title cards. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's like when it when we saw the title card for this episode, I just was so happy because it's one of my favorite parts of the show is seeing the new title card for each episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We also get um, some similarities and some mirroring mm-hmm. of Andy himself in here in Jake. Right, so we're mm-hmm. kind of. Uh, coming full circle now, right? It's the George Lucas, it's poetry, you know, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Um, Jake becomes a foster child, Mm -hmm. just like Andy. Then something happens that makes him look like a freaking lunatic, and then he gets sent away to some boarding school. Mm -hmm. This isn't a military academy like Andy goes to, but instead it's a Christian academy that just so happens to be the you know, the childhood home of Charles Lee Ray, who was also an orphan. So yes. a lot of, a lot of orphans in this, um, just like Batman and, and, yeah, Robin. and Robin, the, Super cute, the yeah. cutest little freaking kid, Gary. Oh my gosh. He was adorable. Gary. He was, was is the key word. R I P Gary. Oh my goodness. Oh my yeah. God. Just the cutest. The citizens of Gotham will pay us in chocolate. <laughs> and he even like gets blown up by a very like Batman-y bomb. Yes, with the green with smoke. With the green smoke and all. Like, it seemed like something that? from the Riddler or, or the Joker sent that in. And I was just like, okay, this kid is just pure Batman. Yeah. He even dies Lived in a Batman died. way. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, I don't love that he died because of, he didn't deserve to die. But as far as the story goes, I like the, you know, the shock of the killing risk, off. The risk, sure. Yeah, like... You know, especially with Chucky. I mean, he's a he's a kid's toy, you know? And I feel like putting children in danger is what Child's Play is all about. And I'm, I'm glad that they, they took the risk this episode and killed a kid. Um, although, R.I.P. Gary, as you said, because he was a cutie. He was, and, and that's just it. Like, sometimes, you know, they'll make a kid really shitty to kill the kid uh-huh. to like lessen the blow right. of the child where you're like ah oh, he was an asshole he was anyway. a little asshole anyways <laughs> like Joffrey or something sure. where you're like fucking kill him please yes. but not but, Gary but Gary is adorable and uh, definitely tough um, <clears throat> anyway uh, so the opening here with Devin and uh, Jake mm. and they're like trying to say goodbye to one another and they're like gonna break up and, and just be like oh. alright you're too far away and then the foster parents come and like, if you don't like, if you don't understand why gay people have it different and why it's not the same and why there does need to be such an emphasis, an emphasis on tolerance yeah. and also representation. I know people get so upset with the agenda of Hollywood and right. that they're pushing homosexuality. 
it's because of shit like this. Yeah. It's because these two kids, like it or not, I mean, if you don't, you can fuck off. Exactly. Um, but like, these kids are in love with each other, yeah. right? And if it was a boy and a girl, they get a thousand for. They wouldn't even consider it. They wouldn't even think. Unless sure. they have like u- uber Catholic parents or something. Yeah, there like, might be. You yeah. can't touch her or whatever. Right. But like some tiptoeing around it. But if it was a boy and a girl, 100% they would have kissed without a second's hesitation yes. or thought. But the fact right? that they, they have, have, to, have sit there. to. Yeah, and he's like, I want to kiss you so bad. Jake says it to Devin. But they're watching, you know, and it's just like, that sucks. I've been in that position where you're like hiding a same sex relationship from parents. And it just is awful. You know, and especially when it's like, obviously these are foster parents, so it's like, you know, you want your birth parents to accept you for who, for who you are, but especially like if you're going to foster a kid, like you need to accept them for who they are. You can't just be like, come in there and, and, and impose your uh, ideologies on them all of a sudden. Well, I mean, it's just, uh, specifically when it's this. But, yeah, right? specifically when it comes sexual, to sexuality. No. Yeah, I'm not talking about like parenting style or whatever. Sure. That's different. But um, I love, you know, that he gets, Jake gets in the car and they start to drive away and Devin just like yells, wait, and then they, they get out and they have such a wonderful kiss. Yes. Like this show, I have so much of that like swelling teen romance with Jake and Devin sure. and it makes me so happy um, with those bits of romance peppered through. And I think that their relationship is really interesting, especially, you know, in this episode even, we have a few, you know, we have that scene where it's super sweet and heartfelt and they end it with like, I'm going to come and see you every weekend. And then we jump to six months later and it's Halloween. Jake is supposed to go and meet with Devin who's making food for him and he can't come. And there's this like tension there because Devin's like, you're the only one that I can talk to about what happened. Like not only do they care about each other as a couple, but they also went through like an extremely traumatic time together with something that's supernatural and weird. Yeah. And to think that, you know, they're, they're not, um, as like open in communication and close as they could be, it hurts. And then even at the end of the episode, um, when they're on the bus headed to the Immaculate Lord or, or whatever the Catholic school place oh, is, yeah. and, um, Devin reaches over to try and hold Jake's hand because Gary's dead and Jake really loved him. And he, you know, Jake pulls away, like he's withdrawing from him. And I'm really curious to see how, like, the environment of the Catholic school is going to affect their relationship. And especially Jake, because he kind of has this moment uh, when he's talking to Devin, too, where he's like, not everybody's going to get it. Like, you got lucky that your foster parents are, like, into it. But the fact that he sort of, and I... It's hard because I, I think that he's questioning it because he wants to fit in and he wants the acceptance, but it makes me wonder if he's going to be influenced negatively um, because of that location. So sorry to go on such a rant about it. Who am I? You? Right. Whoa. My God, let him <laughs> let speak. Let <you> talk. <laughs> but I just, I love, I love uh, that part of the show. Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite, like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to love who I want to love and I'm going to kiss who I want to kiss. Like screw it all moments Mm -hmm. uh, where they run to each other and kiss each other in front of the foster parents. And it's like, you know, I don't care. And that's it. It it really is earned because, you know, we we followed their relationship through the first, Mm -hmm. but we didn't really get confirmation that Devin was even gay or into Jake and, and at all until very late into the season. So now we're kind of getting the the final payoff of that since Dev, you know, Jake obviously had the had the thing for Devin throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's great to see them be so open about it and like I love you and like I love you more. It's like it's not possible oh, and all that stuff. It's so it, it is it, it is a really nice good romance and um, weirdly I, I actually don't see as much negativity towards mm. this relationship so that's good. a good thing that's really anyway good. um so yes i think most of us can agree that gary is adorable and um he's an adorable child but on the flip side of that there's this <laughs> weird little clown kid <laughs> yeah. who comes to jake's door and i'm like the hell's that 
I that don't kid's know. Psychotic. He was crazy. We thought that uh, the kid in the in the clown costume because it, it looks like Carolyn, Chucky. Yeah. yeah, we thought it was gonna be Carolyn, but um, I don't know who this kid is. And he is a little psycho. As far for as sure. Colt Chucky, man. 100%. That kid could be recruited fast. So fast. Like, they'd be like, like, do you want. Yes. <gasps> like, do what? Yes. Okay. We didn't even say what it is. They haven't even went through orientation where they house out knives yet. Oh, man. But that kid has already, like, got one. Let's go. <laughs> I brought my own. I, I call this the freaking mom sticker. Just. Go. <laughs> It was a little farty. <laughs> a, little farty. a little too farty. <laughs> I don't know. I've never stabbed someone. Who knows what it sounds like? I don't know. I don't want to know. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so uh, Jake gets a call from uh, the strangers. Yeah. Is Tamara home? Uh, so this means that Chucky is like sitting around watching horror movies to be yeah, able to reference the strangers. I mean, it makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Chucky would definitely be into horror, but totally uh, would. Yeah, I, I like to sit, I like to sit there and think that uh, Chucky is is actually like at home throwing on horror movies. Oh my gosh, yeah. And referencing like pop culture through horror that that's great to me. Yes. Um. Anyway, uh, I feel like the phone call itself in this is is great and mm. like. The way it's all done, the way it's like being FaceTimed and the call and like just wanted to see if you were at home and all that. Like I felt like that was creepy ass stuff. That that was very like when a stranger calls or Black Christmas or, you know, and you get that creepy ass phone call and it like has the stinger when the guy says the thing that's like, you know, why are you, you know, uh, I see what you're wearing or like, because sure. I'm looking right at you or <laughs> yeah. whatever. You know, like uh, Black Sabbath or yeah. any of that stuff, right? Where you get the phone call with all the very specific details yeah. that makes it know that they're watching you right in this moment. Yeah, yeah. Or the Mothman prophecies. <gasps> no. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so that was cool. And then um, Chucky's going after uh, Lexi. Yeah. And um, Caroline should probably have known better to let a two foot tall demonic, <laughs> this two this two foot doll demonic doyle, toy no. will make you his bitch. Oh yeah, two foot tall demonic yes. doll will make you his bitch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she lets him right in. And then the cops come and break up this little sex scene between Lexi and, and Dracula. Yeah. And uh, this kid's like all into her. And oh Lexi's just like, I want to do drugs and get fucked by randos. Can you please not right now? Yeah, he's like, we should make it special. And she's, and she's like, like she's like, put it in my butt and get out. I, feel- I don't care. <laughs> I feel so bad for her because, you know, everybody copes in different ways. And obviously she's going the drug route. And um, that's scary on a lot of different levels. I mean, A, they're dealing with a supernatural killer doll. So, you know, you kind of need to be as in your right mind as you can. Because I feel like that alone would make you totally question your sanity and what reality was. Well, and also it takes you off your game for if anything happens, like happened in this episode where she comes down the stairs and she's barely conscious. Oh my gosh, yeah. she can't do anything to help her sister or anybody else. Nothing. And, um, yeah, and then obviously all the other stuff that that drugs can do to your your body and mind. And she's so young. Don't uh, do drugs. Yeah, don't do coke. Or any other drugs. I mean, you can do some drugs. You can, like, smoke some weed. <laughs> you, you can do it everywhere. You know what? Yeah, we won't tell you We're what We're not going to tell you But what anyway, she shouldn't be doing them. Uh, no, no. Because she's because she's not doing them as, like, experimentation to have fun and explore yourself no. when you're young and whatever. No, she's doing it as self-medication. Well, as and, an escape. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's never... That's when you know... Yes. That you shouldn't be doing drugs is when you're trying to replace your emotions or your memories. Yeah. That's that's never a good yeah. thing. Anyway. Um, yeah. The cops don't just stay with you for an indeterminate amount of time when you're just like, can you stay with us till your parents come home? Yeah. And the yeah. cops are like, sure. Sure? <laughs> oh, by the way, my mom is in Tahiti and won't be back for a month. Like... Oh. The cops didn't even ask how long no. his mom's going to be home. She's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure to what? 
hours, days? What are you, what are you, yeah, sure. And cops have things to do. Sure. I just thought that was funny when she's like, can you just stay with us till my mom gets home? Unless she said like, my mom's going to be home in five minutes before that, that I missed. No, but she they did. didn't. No. But also it's funny because like, I'm pretty sure she had cocaine like out on her nightstand table. Oh, like sure. while the cops were there. <laughs> sure. She's not snorting coke in this though. She's chopping up freaking like. She has like both though. But yeah, she like cuts up some of her mom's medication. Probably which like is Percocet or something. She's some type of tranquilizer. Eliminating the time release and just putting it all right into her body. Um. Anyways. Um. So. Yeah. I was kind of like, oh, Lexi screwed up by telling her sister that Chucky isn't real in front of Dr. Mixter. Mm -hmm. But then she comes in her room and is like, you know, telling her the truth. Yeah. And that's actually a pretty funny scene because she's like confirming that dolls are all evil. Yeah. And then giving her a knife to defend herself with. And then she's like, sweet dreams. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so funny. I'm like. She's like, you can't tell anybody. They'll think you're crazy. Here, keep this with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it's so much. But Andy was younger. Yeah. Right? Totally. But look how screwed up he is. He keeps a head of Chucky in a safe <laughs> exactly. to torture. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. that's some Dahmer shit. So uh, it, it definitely screws you up. Uh, and Lexi's drug addiction, you know, we kind of, we touched about it. Yeah. Uh, it, drugs are bad, okay? Okay. So... Yeah, she needs to get off that. Um, I really wish, I hope, I, I know this will never happen, but I'm like, I would love to see, like, on YouTube. Now, here's, imagine, all the, like, when you watch YouTube, and unfortunately, when you watch these videos uh, now, because we're shills and sellouts, uh, we have ads before our videos. But imagine if there was an Uber ad. Oh, my God. And they just played Chucky's scene out. I mean, um, for Halloween season, Uber should 100% totally. use this as promotion because this was a straight up Uber app yes. that was hilarious. I am so happy you mentioned it because that made me, like, it, it was a great scene and I immediately, immediately thought that it should be used as an advertisement. Hell yeah. Or as, like, a TikTok It already sound. is. But yeah. 100%. Like, Chucky uses an Uber. Yeah. He's like, I used to have to take hostages to get anywhere, <laughs> but now I just call somebody to pick me up. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's probably still taking the Ubers hostage, maybe? <laughs> I mean, what he's a Uber? Okay, like when you pick somebody up and it's this, it's a like a child, even if he's in a costume, like no way is an adult picking up a little kid. <laughs> and sure. he's even with a younger like I mean a, a but Chucky well. doesn't talk like a kid so he could easily convince like, people I'm... that he's a midget yeah or yeah. a little person yeah he probably he probably could but it's it's funny to imagine I would pick Chucky up uh, yeah and you'd be dead and then I'd be dead <laughs> uh, um, and now we found out that Lexi's bully from school the guy that she learned everything from yeah the, how she learned how to be a bitch <laughs> yeah um He's not only been there for the last three years and hates Lexi, but he also hates Lexi even more because her mom, the ex-mayor, sent him there. Yeah. So Lexi has some serious shit to deal with. This is straight up John claude Van Damme in death warrant and the Sandman has just been put in prison with him. I know you have no <laughs> idea what I'm talking Those about, just... <laughs> but like when you, yeah, any, any prison movie like bad boys with, with Sean Penn, when you get locked in prison with another guy that you already have beef with, mm. it's no good when they have it out for you and now you're locked in a cage with them. Yeah. It's not going to end well. So yeah. Uh, what other eighties action movie can I reference <laughs> that you'll be like, what? Play? Stallone's lockup. I haven't seen that one. All right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that's not good. That, I mean, obviously, no. we're gonna meet Trevor. Yes. Um, now you never know. They could totally pull a fast one on us 
And Trevor could be like reformed, reformed right? Right, and Lexi starts be... dating him oh or something, God. right? Like I don't know. Lexi's gonna need a, a new boy toy in this. He she... could even be pretending to be reformed, and I mean, okay, sure. because the end of the episode, there's a Chucky doll being delivered. Who do you think he's being think, delivered yeah. to? Okay, it could be. He's not being a delivered doll, but... to Tyler. To Tyler. <laughs> uh, but it could oh, go to him, right? wow. I want to see Tyler in this show. Yeah, that would be really rad. But it just reminded me of the, you know, the um, academy that, that Andy goes of to. Course. And when the when the doll comes, Trevor, uh, Trevor, Trevor's yes. the bully. Yes. Tyler gets a hold of the doll and then he becomes um, Chucky's new target. Yeah. Chucky's gonna be a bro. <laughs> but probably is, maybe uh, Trevor probably would be frowned upon these days. Chucky's like <laughs> it's so funny because I feel like you know he was like not what is considered PC, but now he like doesn't discriminate like people's sexuality. No, he's, he's like, very accepting, really accepting, <laughs> and doesn't like yeah, he just likes to kill everybody. Exactly. Yeah, that's how all slashers are in my head. I think Chucky needs to join up uh, with Terry Silver and Cobra Kai because. Uh, <laughs> He's talking about world domination oh my now. Oh, God. It's like, Honey. we were going to take over the world. <laughs> I'm like, Chucky. Chucky. The world? <laughs> were, were all those packages being sent to, like, all the freaking leaders of different countries? Right, 72. So you just look at the packages and it's like Vladimir Putin. Oh, my God. And Kim Jong-un. Yes. And all these different people. Maybe. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so awesome first episode. Super Immediately awesome. just puts us right back into it. All the characters feel, you know, the same. Yeah. Um, and, and we're heading towards a whole new thing. So it doesn't feel like a, a rinse, lather, repeat. Um, it just, it's amazing that, that uh, Don Mancini and the company has been able to stretch out a killer doll movie oh, yeah. into seven films and now two seasons of a television series that I'm sure they have planned to go multiple mm. seasons. And and I would love, ideally, for this show to end with a film. Oh my gosh, me too. That would be just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's fantastic. We shall see. Um. Uh, spoilers for the show, by the way. Oh, by the way. <laughs> a, little, a little late. Just a little late. A little late. <laughs> um, but what do you guys think? I think yeah. this this uh, discussion is longer than the episode. Probably, but we're so excited. We we're are. so excited. We, so. we hope you are, too. Yeah. And if you're still here, you are. Or you're just like, I just can't wait to see what these morons will say <laughs> next. <laughs> but what did you think? Yeah, what, what are you guys' think? theories for this yeah. season? Um, when is Glenn or Glenda going to come into it? Are we going to actually see the Glenn or Glenda doll? Mm -hmm. Um, is Tiffany going to be resurrected? Cause we didn't even talk about Tiffany getting oh her head gosh. shot off. We didn't. Yeah. Um, so is, is Tiffany going to be, um, you know, brought back through the, uh, the doll, mm -hmm. the, uh, well, the, the the wedding bell doll blew up because it was right next to... Um, no. Wasn't it right next to Gary? It was... Like across? And he no, said but Gary was ran out into the, live, into the kitchen. Yeah, but that's where the the wedding bell doll was. Oh, he was standing... Yeah, oh, it was, at, it the was at the table. Yeah. He said it was a six-foot radius. I now, know. if you would have blown up right there, it would not have killed Lexi on the stairs. Um, no. I don't know what the green smoke is. I'm assuming I that's like the the fertilizer mixed with butane makes green freaking laughing gas. I, I don't know what the hell that stuff was. Um, but. What would be really cool is if the doll is damaged somewhat and we get like a, 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 um, a stitched together version of the Tiffany doll. Like in Bride of Chucky? Sure. I, I mean, I, I think we're probably just getting the Wedding Bell doll as like a nod to the original doll. Yeah, I think doll, so right? too. Because we've seen the good guy doll many times now. Yeah. But we'd only ever seen her doll. And we found out that Tiffany, I guess, had lavish tastes because she was in possession 
of a rare uh, 90s doll, although this was in the 90s. So maybe yeah. she just bought it at random she and then it became <laughs> rare, therefore, after. Or maybe because of the Tiffany murders, oh. they were like canceled the doll. Yeah, so then it got even more rare. Whoa. Uh, but otherwise, what do you guys think of the episode? Uh, tell us all about it in the comments below. What you think is going to happen. Uh, we've talked enough. I don't think we need to get into like uh, any, you know, guessing for what's going to happen. Yeah, not yet. I just want to know when like Tiffany and Nika, Glenn or Glenda and all that stuff uh, is going to come into it. Yes. But uh, I think the next episode we're going to primarily focus on uh, and uh, Andy. On Jake and, and everyone. Uh, Getting settled. Exactly. And, yeah, meeting all the people. Kind of setting up the yeah. rules of the school. I'm excited. Who does not lie? Who doesn't lie? Are we going to see that Chucky package opened? Are we going to mm -hmm. see where it goes? I'm going to guess Trevor. That's what I'm guessing. He's old, though. Yeah, but... I think this is probably going to be a school that has, like... Younger, younger kids. Yeah, like children uh... of all ages. And it's going to go to... Now, why Chucky would send himself to anyone random, I have no idea. Or maybe he means to send it to... Or maybe it's Jake not a Chucky something. doll at all. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's... We haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we don't know. But more than likely. It's a Chucky it doll. <laughs> anyway, guys. Until next week. Bye. Bye.